Invincible is finally out on Amazon, and we here at Key Issues are continuing our coverage of the show's main cast. This is the second episode, so if you missed the first on Omni-Man, feel free to check it out now. Invincible is a massive series that ran for over 144 issues, and it spawned an entire universe of characters. Today's video is going to cover the character which the series is named after, Mark Grayson, Invincible himself. Now, before we begin, it is important to note that much like The Boys, this is not a series for younger readers or viewers. The series is primarily aimed at adults. It's ultra-violent and deals with a wide variety of topics like war, death, and sexual assault. Additionally, due to the length of the series and the fact that Mark's in, like, every single issue almost, we won't be covering everything that happens, instead only the most important elements of Mark's story. And lastly, in terms of the way this video is presented, everything won't always be chronological, and you may need to check out other videos in order to get the full scope of what's going on. But that's just because I didn't want this video to be five hours long. So that being said, let's get started. Mark Grayson's first comic book appearance is in, you guessed it, Invincible number one. Mark Grayson is a typical high school student at Reginald Vell Johnson High School. Fun easter egg, you might actually remember Reginald Vell Johnson if you're old enough from characters like Carl Winslow on the sitcom Family Matters and LAPD Sergeant Al Powell in the first two Die Hard movies. Did I say that Mark was typical? Yeah, you might want to actually scratch that, because Mark has known from a young age that his father, Omni-Man, is one of the most powerful superheroes on Earth. When Mark was a young boy, his father tells him that he's an alien and that he belongs to a race known as the Viltrumites, a benevolent race of aliens who are incredibly powerful and go from planet to planet offering protection for less developed species. Mark's father, Nolan, also informs Mark that eventually, when Mark gets older, he'll begin to develop powers like his father super strength, speed, and vulnerability, and flight. During his senior year of high school, Mark's powers finally start to kick in, and he also starts thinking about girls and getting hair in places that there weren't hair before. You know the deal. After Mark's powers kick in, and along with help from his father and his father's tailor, Art Rosenbaum, he gets a costume and begins fighting crime. One day at school, Mark ends up standing up to a bully that's picking on another kid, and his principal tells him that it was very brave to do that, but he should be careful because Mark isn't invincible. Mark uses the conversation as inspiration and starts fighting crime under the name Invincible, a name that is put to the test many, many times in the comics. Mark meets up with local crime fighters, the Teen Team, composed of Adam Eve, Robot, Rexplode, and Duplicate and he also learns that Eve attends his high school and they quickly bond over being heroes. Invincible's first few big battles serve to establish the supporting cast, like Mark's best friend William, his girlfriend Amber, and the stakes that go along with being a hero. For example, Mark helps repel a Flax and alien invasion with his father, but his dad gets sucked into an alternate dimension and doesn't return for months. While Mark's father is away in an alternate dimension, Mark first meets Alan the Alien, a scout for the Coalition of Planets who, unbeknownst to him, has been going to the wrong planet for 15 years. Alan and Mark talk, and Mark quickly learns that not every problem needs to be a massive battle. However, in a massive, shocking, twist move, the premier superhero team, the Guardians of the Globe, are killed by Omni-Man in secret. After the Guardians of the Globe are killed, Director of the Global Defense Agency, Cecil Stedman, appoints Robot the new leader. Robot forms a new Guardians of the Globe comprised of himself, Duplicate, Shrinking Ray, Monster Girl, Black Samson, and Rex Splode. Mark is offered membership but declines. When one of the former Guardians of the Globe, a mortal, is brought back to life by the Mauler twins, he regenerates and starts to battle Omni-Man. You know, for killing him and the rest of the Guardians. I mean, I imagine I'd be upset too. And because of this battle, Mark ends up learning the horrible truth about his father and his father's goals on Earth. Mark confronts his father, and Nolan tells him the truth of their species and why he's on the planet. The Viltrumite race were not the benevolent people that Nolan claimed they were. In fact, they were a horrible, vicious race that conquers and subjugates planets, offering them protection in exchange for their obedience and natural resources. Nolan asks Mark to join him in his quest, as he was simply waiting on Earth, biding his time until he had an ally strong enough to help him take down the multitude of heroes on the planet. Mark begs his father to reconsider, and Nolan reveals a hidden side of himself that's much more cold and aggressive than previously shown. Nolan attempts to justify his actions to Mark, saying that 
both of them will live to be thousands of years old and that everybody he knows will die in the blink of an eye in the grand scheme of his life. Nolan taunts Mark, asking him, what will you have in 500 years, implying that the Earth is insignificant due to the longevity of Mark's own life. Nolan and Mark battle, with Nolan viciously beating Mark and leaving him for dead, before shockingly leaving the planet altogether. Omni-Man pretty much ruins his entire legacy on Earth in an instant when he destroys multiple buildings and kills thousands of people in the battle with Mark. The entire thing is broadcast on TV, but fortunately for Mark, no one learns the truth that Omni-Man is actually his father. Invincible is in a coma for two weeks before waking up and picking up the pieces of his family's fractured life. Multiple elements of Mark's life change during this time. His mom falls into a deep depression, Mark's best friend learns his identity, as does his girlfriend, and Invincible starts working for Cecil Stedman, who enlists Mark to help with planetary-level threats. This working relationship with Cecil continues in some capacity for the majority of the series, but proves to be fairly complicated, with Mark and Cecil often at ends over their approach to dealing with threats and villains. Invincible proves to be quite a hero, but learns that balancing his private life with being a government-controlled hero is extremely difficult. Mark goes away to college, and he meets a number of threats that go on to become multiple-time run-ins, like a parasitic race of aliens known as the Sequids, a college scientist, D.A. Sinclair, who turns out to be a madman, turning college students and the homeless into his own personal army of reanimen, and also during this time, Mark meets a man capable of interdimensional travel named Angstrom Levy, who goes on to become one of his most dangerous recurring villains. Now, I will cover Angstrom Levy in much greater detail in his own video, but he is going to show up a number of times in this one. Keep in mind that Angstrom just blames Mark for an incident that horribly disfigures him, and he consistently finds ways to brutally attack Mark throughout his life. Eventually, Mark is asked to go to a faraway alien planet at the behest of Cecil in order to help a race of insectoid-like beings. Mark is taken to the planet Thraxa, where he finds his father, who arrived on the planet, became the leader, and had a son with their queen, Andressa. Nolan tells Mark that by abandoning Earth, he's effectively committed treason, and that other Viltrumites will find him and kill him. If Nolan is going to have any chance for survival, he needs Mark to help him protect his new wife and child. Three other Viltrumites arrive on the planet, and a horrible battle ensues that causes the death of thousands of the Thraxans. Mark is beaten nearly to death, and his father suffers a pretty nasty case of getting your spine snapped in half. But the Viltrumites don't kill Mark. Instead, they leave him there and make him the new ambassador to Earth for the Viltrumite Empire. Weeks pass, and Mark recuperates and helps rebuild the damage done by the Viltrumite attack. The Queen Andressa asks Mark to return to Earth and take his half-brother with him. The Thraxan species age much faster, living a full life in only nine months. Because of this, Andressa believes that Mark's brother will have a much better quality of life on Earth with him. Mark returns home with his half-brother, informing his mother of everything that transpired and asks her to raise his half-brother for him. She agrees and names him Oliver. Mark is again attacked by Angstrom Levy, when Levy takes Mark's mother and brother hostage, but Mark is stranded in multiple alternate dimensions during the fight. During the battle, Mark tackles Angstrom into an alternate dimension and beats him seemingly to death, stranding them both there. Mark is rescued by a much older version of the Guardians of the Globe, who inform him that without Mark there to help defend Earth, basically the whole planet goes to crap. This older version of Eve confesses to Mark that she loved him and never told him, something Mark wrestles with internally for a good period of time. When Mark returns, he eventually mutually decides with his girlfriend Amber that they should split, and after a brief period of time, he and Eve start dating, a relationship that basically lasts for the rest of the series with some minor ups and downs. Rather than cover every battle that occurs in this time, I'm again going to kind of jump to some more important stuff. Mark's brother Oliver continues to grow at a rapid pace, and Mark begins to train him, and the two fight crime together for a bit. A female Viltrumite named Anissa comes to Earth and reminds Mark that he's supposed to be conquering the planet and she reminds him pretty violently. After a number of other minor run-ins with various villains, Mark comes to realize that Cecil has been keeping a number of things from him. 
Cecil has secretly been using D.A. Sinclair to build Reanimen out of corpses for the government, and he's also been using Darkwing, another minor character who Mark had defeated after witnessing him commit multiple murders earlier in the series. Mark and Cecil come to blows, with Cecil unleashing an army of Reanimen on Mark. Additionally, we learn that Mark's weakness is his equilibrium, and that Cecil can exploit this to nearly kill him if need be. Mark escapes and enlists the help of the Guardians of the Globe, and severs his relationship with Cecil, adopting a new blue uniform he wears for a good period of time. Mark's relationship with Eve grows, and they slowly fall in love. Mark also acts as a free agent crime fighter for a while, with Oliver helping him. However, the two soon come to blows as Oliver doesn't have the same moral compass that Mark does, and believes that murdering their villains would actually be way easier and avoid longer term ramifications. Eve, growing concerned that they wouldn't have any government backing or money, starts a business called Invincible Inc. that would allow Mark to contract his services to protect various businesses and people. It's around this time that the teams start to notice that they're being monitored by a series of floating orbs. The orbs are revealed to be advanced weaponry, allowing Angstrom Levy, who is of course not dead, to attack Mark again. In an event that would go on to be called the Invincible War, Mark and the Guardians of the Globe face down various other Marks from alternate dimensions gathered by Angstrom. The attack by the alternate dimension Marks and Angstrom is brutal, with Eve being seriously hurt in the carnage. Mark and the other heroes are able to repel the threat, but the fallout from the battle is massive, with a lot of people dying. Most of the Invincibles are killed off, and the remaining ones are trapped in an alternate dimension. Oliver is even able to sway Mark's moral compass and convinces him to kill Angstrom. However, Mark is not quick enough and Angstrom flees, albeit missing an arm. The world is pretty much left in shambles, with many heroes dying in the war, including Rex Splode and Darkwing. Cecil asks Mark to join a new Guardians of the Globe that he's assembling, but again, Mark declines. He doesn't really have much time to consider a whole lot, as an insanely brutal and sadistic Viltrumite named Conquest comes to Earth. Conquest was charged with validating Mark's progress on conquering the planet. However, he was sent there, hoping Mark would have made little to no progress as an excuse to kill him. Mark and Conquest fight, and the battle is insanely brutal. Eve and Oliver attempt to assist Mark during the battle, but they're easily dispatched, with Eve being impaled and believed dead. Fortunately though, Eve doesn't die. Instead, she's revived by her own powers, a topic that I'll discuss in far greater detail in her own video. But essentially, think of it this way. When facing certain death, Eve is capable of using her powers to repair her own body, essentially reviving herself from death. Eve fires a massive blast at Conquest before passing out, and Mark is able to rally using the anger of Eve's supposed death to muster the willpower and strength needed to kill Conquest, hitting him with headbutt after headbutt until he's believed to be dead. Conquest's body is retrieved and nursed back to health by Cecil, believing he could learn more about the Viltrumites from him. Mark recuperates from his injuries in the hospital, and he and Eve attend Rexplode's funeral. When they visit Oliver later in the hospital, Mark tells Oliver that he's had a change of heart and he'll no longer hesitate to kill his enemies. And the series spends some time exploring Mark's new morality, but ultimately most of these stories will be told in other videos. Mark's father Nolan returns from space with Alan and they recruit Mark, Oliver, and a number of other heroes for an event known as the Viltrumite War. However, on the way back to the Coalition of Worlds' home planet, they are again attacked by Conquest and two other Viltrumites. The resulting carnage ends with Mark killing Conquest for good, but being wounded to the point that he spends months recuperating on an alien world with his father and Oliver. When Mark finally recovers, the group heads to the home planet of the Coalition of Worlds, which is already under attack by the leader of the Viltrumites, Thrag. Thrag's forces are repelled by the combined might of Mark, Nolan, Oliver, and the Coalition, which forces a final showdown at the planet Viltrum. During this battle at Viltrum, the entire planet is destroyed, and as retaliation, Thrag beats Nolan, Oliver, and Mark nearly to death before leaving them in space to head for Earth. It's believed that Thrag means to destroy Earth as revenge for the planet Viltrum being destroyed, but instead, when Mark arrives, Thrag presents him with a truce. The terms are pretty simple. 
Thrag and the other Viltramites will live on Earth, and in exchange for allowing them to crossbreed and replenish their ranks, Thrag won't attack Earth and kill everybody. Which is a pretty good deal if you ask me. Mark reluctantly agrees, and the Viltramites disappear into Earth's population. However, despite this truce, Alan makes plans to unleash a new version of a deadly virus that long ago had ravaged the Viltramite people, leading to a death rate of nearly 100%. This new strain of the deadly Scourge virus would also kill the remaining Viltramites on Earth, but it could potentially kill everyone else as well. Mark and Eve's relationship continues, but is strained when Mark learns that Eve was pregnant and had an abortion while Mark was gone fighting the Viltramite war. Now we kind of get into the point where it's really just tragedy after tragedy. Mark continues to act as a crime fighter working with Eve in Invincible Inc., but also in reserves for the Guardians and Cecil. However, Mark's morality is again shifted slightly when Las Vegas is completely destroyed by a climate-conscious villain named Dinosaurus, using multiple hydrogen bombs to turn the town into glass. For a period of time, Mark tries fighting less and talking more to various villains, in an attempt to lower the destruction rate in his conflicts. Some work, others prove to be big mistakes. When Mark sees that some good had come from the destruction of Las Vegas, he makes the ethical decision to help break Dinosaurus out of the Pentagon, where he's currently being detained. This makes Mark an enemy of the planet for a brief period of time. Eventually, Alan and Oliver return to Earth and attempt to unleash the new strain of the Scourge virus, leading to Mark being infected and losing his powers briefly, but surviving. Mark is held on a Viltramite warship, being observed by Thrag until he recuperates. During that time, Thrag reviews Mark's DNA and determines that Mark and Nolan are actually the descendants of their planet's dead supreme leader, Lord Argyle. This topic is discussed in greater detail in my video on Omni-Man. Once Mark's powers returned, he's faced with another tragedy. Dinosaurus, who had been recently working with Mark to try and do some good on the planet, unleashes a number of bombs that kill hundreds of thousands of people. The public sees Dinosaurus kill Mark on television, but in secret, Dinosaurus had really put Mark into a coma and killed a clone of him that he made earlier. Mark, employing his new talk-before-killing policy, discusses the fact that Dinosaurus might actually have a god complex. After the discussion, and seeing the error of his ways and what's transpired, Dinosaurus asks Mark to kill him, as he believes that despite him wanting to do good for the planet, his methods simply aren't logical and he can't be left alive. Mark agrees and kills him, and also begins working for Cecil again, half as penance for aiding Dinosaurus, and half as a way to avoid jail for the rest of his life. Eve reveals to Mark that she's pregnant again, and this time determined to make it work. The two spend some time preparing for the baby and move into Mark's childhood home. Also during this time period, Thrag attacks Nolan after learning of Mark and Nolan's lineage. Nolan ends up becoming the leader of the Viltramites and exiles Thrag. Again, this is covered in much greater detail in Nolan's video, but it's important for you to know it in this one as well. It is not long after that that Angstrom Levy again attacks. This guy, am I right? Mark is again transported to a desolate planet where he faces off with a cannibal version of himself who's really just trying to grab a little Grayson snack. In the meantime, while Mark is gone, Angstrom is essentially talked out of his war on Mark by Eve, who questions that maybe he could have done a lot more good with his life if he spent it focusing on not killing Mark all the time. Angstrom brings them back, but one of the other parallel Marks kidnaps him back to his own dimension. Mark continues his life, having other minor adventures, before Robot informs him that he's found Angstrom in a parallel dimension and can send Mark there. Eve begs Mark not to go, but he can't live with the idea that Angstrom could change his mind at any time and come back and kill them. Mark goes to the home dimension of the version of himself that helped him earlier, and finds that Angstrom is barely alive, being used by this dimension's Mark to expand his empire. Robot double-crosses Mark, kills Angstrom and the alternate version Mark, and leaves Invincible stranded. Mark is able to return to his own home dimension after enlisting the help of that dimension's robot, but the process takes months and months. When Mark returns, Eve has somewhat moved on from him, not wanting their child to be raised in an environment where they're never sure if Mark is going to survive whatever crazy adventure he's on. Mark leaves, but is intercepted by the Viltramite Anessa 
who asks Mark where he's been as she had been looking for him. Mark tries to ignore her, not wanting to disrupt their truce with Thrag, but Anissa reveals that she wishes to mate with Mark. Mark obviously declines, but Anissa doesn't take no for an answer and violently beats Mark. The attack ends with Anissa raping Mark, something that deeply affects Mark psychologically for a long period of time. Mark attempts to figure out where Robot went and what he's doing by going to Cecil, and in the process, Robot in a new drone slits Cecil's throat and crushes his skull, killing him. Robot also attacks Eve in the process and cuts her leg off. Mark and Eve are able to escape and head to an orbiting Viltramite ship where Eve gives birth to their daughter, Tara. Yay, new daddy! I'll send a card. Robot's long-term plans start to take form and he takes over the world killing many heroes and villains, but ultimately ushering in a utopia. Mark and Eve end up drastically outmatched and leave the planet heading back to the homeworld of the Coalition of Planets. They essentially leave Robot to run Earth, as despite his plans being incredibly horrific, the results are positive for the planet. The series spends some time with Mark and Eve as they get accustomed to living on an alien world and being new parents, but eventually, Mark is contracted by Alan to work as a spy for the Coalition. During one mission, Mark is forced to go back to Thraxa to investigate sightings of Thrag, who's believed to be creating an army of new half-breed Viltramites. During this mission, Mark comes into contact with an alien being that emits a bright white light knocking Mark unconscious. When Mark wakes, he's five years in the past. This arc is a bit messy, but basically the long and short here is that Mark is presented with the opportunity to correct the wrongs of his past, but if he does so, it will undo his future. Mark, worried that he won't have his wife and daughter in the future if he already knows everything in the past, decides against it and returns to the future. In a cruel twist of fate, when he returns, he finds that five years have passed. His daughter has grown, and Eve has moved on, believing him dead. Mark and Eve reconcile and decide to take an extended vacation on an alien world with their daughter Tara and Oliver. It doesn't take long before the family is attacked by two of Thrag's half-breed Viltramite children. Alone, they wouldn't be capable of defeating Mark, but with Mark having to watch out for his significantly weaker family members, he's unable to fight them properly, and in the battle, Oliver is killed. Thrag arrives and taunts Mark before Mark kills his son in front of him. Thrag, in retaliation, rips Mark in half and beats Eve to the point of death. Thrag, believing that he's won, leaves the planet. But Eve's powers kick in, repair the damage done to both Mark and Eve, and the group returns to the Coalition to inform them of Thrag's new half-breed army. Knowing that they're going off to face the most powerful enemy they've ever faced before, Mark and Eve finally decide to tie the knot and get married. This sets the stage for the final showdown of the series, between the combined might of the Heroes of Earth, the Coalition of Worlds, and the Viltramites loyal to Nolan, versus Thrag and his army of a thousand half-breed Viltramites. Both sides endure heavy losses, with the difference being that Thrag doesn't actually care about his. He doesn't care about his children or anything, the only thing he cares about is revenge against Nolan and Mark. This revelation causes his sons and daughters to abandon him. And in the final battle, Thrag is able to mortally wound Nolan, and Mark and Thrag do battle on the surface of the sun, with Mark coming out the victor. Mark saves the universe from Thrag, but in the process, his father and many others die. Nolan, on his deathbed, proclaims Mark to be the new leader of the Viltramites, and thanks Mark for changing him and subsequently the course of Viltramite history. After the battle with Thrag, the series pivots to Mark and the other heroes of Earth usurping Robot and ending his rule over the planet. As the series ends, we see Mark become a truly benevolent leader of the new Viltrum Empire with a nearly immortal Eve by his side. Mark dedicates his life to the ideas his father told him about as a child, and uses the Viltrumites as a force for good. Mark's daughter grows up to be a hero like him, and Mark even finds out that he has a son named Marky who becomes the new protector of Earth and the new Invincible. Marky is a byproduct of the sexual assault by Anissa earlier in the series. As the series ends, we see Mark smiling, and Eve reminding him that he had done everything his father had ever hoped he would do. Mark smiles and reminds her of something his dad asked him when trying to sway him to his side during their first fight. What will you have in 500 years? And that is the comic book history of Mark Grayson, aka Invincible. 
I hope you guys learned a lot, and if you did, please make sure to leave a comment below, hit the like button, and subscribe. This has been Nick with Key Issues. Thanks again for watching, and remember the motto, Invincible over everything.